Hi everybody, my name is Martin Olson. I'm with the Nevada Department of Wildlife. I'm the Southern Region Hunter Education Coordinator. And we're here for our big game season and application tag workshop, uh, in which we're gonna get to cover uh, quite a few things. So we'll go ahead and, and get started. Uh, we are recording this uh, simultaneously with an in-person class. So if you know someone who is interested in watching this at a later time, uh, you'll be able to search and let them watch through this. We have uh, quite a bit of great information. And uh, Michelle Lopez, uh, who is our terrific uh, moderator uh, on the system here, she'll be looking for any questions that pop up there. So if you have any, uh, let me know. Uh, we're looking at uh, probably an hour to an hour and a half uh, through the presentation. So I'm hoping that I will cover anything that you're looking for. Uh, if not, please feel free to ask. And we also have a 1-800 number, a helpline, uh, if you do have any questions on anything that uh, pertains to uh, applying for a TAG in Nevada, uh, please feel free to use that number uh, so we can help you out. Okay, so a few things we're gonna be looking at today is gonna be what's new and how bonus points work individually and as a party. Uh, that's one of the most, uh, uh, sought after questions that I get between individuals and party hunting. We're going to look at uh, the draw order uh, in which uh, there's several applications you can apply for. And uh, the draw order is something very important to understand and to know. Uh, navigation of your application. Uh, uh, we have a lot of new exciting stuff that you can go back and edit in your application. Uh, and mostly your profile your profile, uh, credit card, and your email. Uh, hunter education, of course, uh, is very important at this aspect because uh, applying for a tag, anyone born after January 1st, 1960, uh, has got to have a class in safe hunting. So if you don't have that, uh, we're gonna show you how to get that and how to apply that to your profile so you can apply for tag. Auto renew license is uh, one of my favorites. I love this system uh, uh, solely because our license are 365 uh, days. And so I don't have to remember when it's time for me to go ahead and purchase another license. Uh, I like that uh, personally. Uh, also we're gonna show you how to print your license if you need to or save it electronically. Uh, and a, a few things I may say more than once and it may be because I don't remember saying it, or because it's so important, I'm going to say it more than once. And printing your license or having it electronically is one of those. Because when you're in the field, you have to have your hunting license. If you have a big game tag, you have to have that on you as well. Uh, if it is electronic and you're in an area where you have no cell service, uh, you still need to be able to possess that license. So electronically, you can obviously take a screenshot of that and save it in your photo. Uh, that way you'll always have it. So that's very important to know. Party applications, residents and non-residents. Linking accounts. Linking accounts is a very interesting uh, activity that we find a lot of people uh, who have uh, smaller youth, uh, who maybe does not have their own email address uh, or their own credit card and you want to link them to your account, I'm going to show you how to do that. It's very simple. Uh, and again, applying as an individual or as a party hunt. The alternate option uh, and the FCFS, which is first come, first serve, and uh, return cards and surveys, which is always important in Nevada and in most states. And um, the uh, number one question that I get this time of year is Martin, what are my best chances? What's the best thing I could do to get a tag? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you here on, on some of these things. And um, uh, alternate option is, is always something that works for some people. Uh, it's a way that if a tag is returned for some reason, uh, and you're the alternate, which is going to be only your first choice, 
And if you are that alternate, then you automatically get the card so it, or the tag, so it never goes to the first come, first serve. Again, another way to be successful. So with that being said, uh, uh, this presentation uh, provides only a summary, but not all of this year's changes. So please uh, pick up this Big Game Seasons and Applications book. Uh, you also can get this online. So if you don't have the paper copy, you can go uh, to E-Regulations, Nevada 2023, uh, and page through this electronically. <clears throat> okay, so here's some important information uh, for 2023. Uh, again, the alternates, uh, uh, alternates will be awarded a tag up to 14 calendar days before the hunt season opens. So if you choose the alternate option on your big game application, uh, you potentially could receive that tag, you know, up to two weeks before the season starts. And remember, it's only your first choice. Uh, the first choice for the alternate is the only thing it looks for. If there is no alternate choice there for that particular hunt, uh, then that tag goes right into the first come, first serve. And uh, which you can also access on the inbound licensing website uh, when they come available. And of course, that's not up right now until tags have all been sent out and tags start coming back in. It, uh, uh, there's not a list. You may look and see nothing's available right now. And you may look 10 minutes later mm -hmm. and there's two or three tags there. Mm -hmm. So you have to continuously keep looking at that throughout you know, the whole year. Some people will turn their tags in fairly early. Other people, something happens closer to the hunt where you know it might be as late as September or something uh, that a tag gets returned. Uh, new this year uh, on the spike elk, uh, and I bring this up because uh, it's changed uh, quite a bit. You can have no more than two, two antler points on either side, and that's uh, technically a spike elk. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because spike elk is a category within itself. Uh, so you can apply for antler elk, antlerless elk, and a spike elk. So those are three different hunts that you can apply for. Just keep in mind that a spike elk can have no more than two points on either side. Uh, the, um, the hunt news, and this is, this is big uh, for us this year. Uh, this year we will have a non-resident mountain goat tag available and it's been several years since we've had a non-resident mountain goat. So if you know a non-resident or you are a non-resident and uh, you have mountain goat bonus points, this is the year to start applying again. Uh, if there's no season that was offered, your bonus points kind of get frozen there and they stay there until the season is open. Uh, now, if you don't apply for two years in a row, then your bonus points will zero out. So you always want to remember, don't miss more than two years in a row. And if there's a year that you can't get to, for whatever reason, uh, some people have weddings to go to or other big events going on, but you can still purchase a bonus point. And I'll say that a few times during this presentation because the bonus point is really going to help you uh, down the road and better your chances uh, for drawing the tag. And I'll give, give you an example of that when we get to that part of it. Again, a mountain goat non-resident hunt opens uh, in unit 102 for those non-residents. Uh, and also new this year, uh, the mule deer junior hunt uh, is now antlered only hunts, except for those units uh, Unit 6, Unit 7, and Unit 10. And those are still either uh, antler or antler list. Uh, very important because prior to this year, uh, all junior hunts were uh, antler or antler list. But now it's specific units that are only antler and antler list. Uh, and also down at the very bottom there, uh, you have till May 10th is the deadline to apply for your big game draw. Uh, there is, and obviously the big, uh, big game draw is open right now. Uh, there's absolutely no benefit to being the first person uh, to sign up and put your application in or the last. 
Uh, however, I will caution you on being toward the end uh, because uh, the system gets very busy. Uh, it, it can you know, uh, be slower. So don't hesitate if you run into an issue or something and you wait till that last day, it's very hard to get everything straightened out and get your, your application in. So don't wait till uh, May 10th at three o'clock in the afternoon to put your application in. Nothing's gonna happen until that deadline hits uh, and then the tags will be out uh, that following week, like within seven to nine days. So, um, uh, keeping you up to date on some regulations, uh, most of these are not new. Again, the non-resident mountain goat is open and the spike elk, uh, those are two things because for years now we've, we've had uh, hunters going for spike elk uh, that had a different uh, definition. So make sure everybody's aware of that. Uh, trail cameras must be removed by August uh, 1st through December 31st of each year and July 1st if it has the capability of transmitting images. So that's very important if anybody's using trail cameras uh, to make sure those are removed by then. Uh, and Nevada does have a shed hunting, uh, uh, shed antler hunting. And uh, there are certain counties that are closed to that during certain times. And so from January 1st to April 30th, uh, a shed hunting collection certificate is required, which you can get on the Endow uh, licensing website. Uh, it's a class you take, and it will go into your certificates, just like your, your hunter education or your boater education or your archery education. Uh, so important to know, the counties there are Nye, Lincoln, Lander, White Pine, uh, Elko, and Eureka. Uh, thermal imaging optics, yes, technology is changing all the time. Uh, so any thermal imaging optics uh, that are devices with infrared vision equipped that allows uh, enhanced night vision while hunting or taking any game animal or bird or while locating game animals or birds for the purpose of hunting. So that means even if you're out at night and you're not hunting during, during a season, uh, it is illegal to use those uh, uh, infrared night vision optics to search or find something. Uh, goes without saying, drone and unmanned aircraft uh, is, is typically the same thing. This is nothing new. These, these have been uh, in place for some time, uh, but you cannot, for the purpose of hunting or trapping, locate or observe with a drone or any type of an aircraft. And again, the electronic license hunters are required to possess a license when in the field and have the ability uh, to show it. And this includes the electronic version. So uh, keep that in mind. You can always take a snapshot of that and, and save it in your, in your photos. Uh, continuing this year, uh, hunters must obtain a general hunting license for the purpose of, uh, for purchasing bonus points and applying for the big game draw. Hunters are still allowed to purchase a license only if drawn, but will not earn any bonus points. So I caution you on that. If you're going to apply, keep the license and start building up bonus points. Uh, hunting licenses are valid for 365 days. Hence the reason I said the auto renew works really well for me because I can't remember last year exactly when I bought it and if my hunting license is still valid right now, but it expires May 8th, I can put in for the draw, but if I draw something and I don't have a valid license, I will not get that tag. So that's where the uh, electronic license really is, is helpful. Uh, the system is also gonna tell you here if you need a license uh, when you apply uh, to get past that point of the, uh, the date of the deadline for the draw. Uh, now, if your license expires sometime in July or August, uh, you still will, and you receive your tag in the mail, you still will have to remember to go in and purchase a license before you take to the field for the rest of that year, if that makes sense. Uh, so that's why I like the auto renew license. Uh, I'm building bonus points. I'm gonna have a license every year. 
So why not just do the auto renew? <clears throat> Uh, and again, you can print your own license uh, at home if you have a printer, uh, or you can have it emailed to you and save it uh, electronically. Uh, big game harvest surveys. Uh, every year, if you draw a big game tag, uh, you are required uh, for a tag holder to submit, uh, even if you were not successful, uh, a survey saying, you know, I was successful or I was not successful. Uh, the deadline for submitting this uh, is January 31st. And believe me, a lot of people forget this. You can go right online, uh, right, and I'm going to show you where to do this. Again, I'm in Dow Licensing. And uh, you can do your uh, survey electronically. So uh, it's easy to do. When you come back from your hunt, don't forget to do it. Uh, otherwise, you will not be able to put in for the next year's draw. Unless... You pay a $50 fine, and you still have to complete the survey. So don't forget to do the survey. Uh, party hunts and bonus points. Uh, we're going to get uh, pretty, pretty in-depth into this. Uh, in a nutshell, party hunts and bonus points, uh, the bonus points are averaged uh, between all the people in your party. Uh, and a few years ago, we started... A person in the party cannot return their tag unless everyone in the party returns their tag. So keep that in mind. If your buddy decides at the last minute he can't go, but you still want to go, you definitely still can. He just has basically forfeited his license. He will not be able to return it and get his bonus points reissued unless everyone in the party does. Because in essence, a party application is really only one application. It just has more than one name on it. So that whole application has got to be returned. If you're an individual hunter and you have one application and you return your tag, then that uh, application is done and the bonus points are returned. If that makes any sense to you guys. Uh, here's a couple new things we got going on. Some of these started last year and it is the uh, management RAM one horn. Um, there's no bonus point uh, for this uh, uh, big horn, one horn ram hunt. Uh, keep in mind that the shorter horn has got to be uh, at least half of what the longest horn is. Uh, so you really have to do some, uh, some looking on that uh, and make sure. But you can put in for this hunt and a desert big horn sheep hunt as well. The difference is there's no bonus points on this one. We also have a Nelson Desert Bighorn Sheep Management Ram Access Limited this year. This is new. And so uh, this one is the same way. Uh, this is a, uh, a once in a lifetime. And uh, this one, uh, also there's no bonus points. Uh, and keep in mind on this management, Access Limited uh, is, there's virtually a lot of hiking on this one. Uh, a lot of ways to get uh, into to this, but it's a lot by foot. So there's not a lot of road access uh, or any of that. Keep that in mind. Again, another avenue of applying for something that uh, you can uh, draw a tag for. And lastly, uh, uh, over here in 231, we have uh, an antler uh, elk depredation hunt. And if you see the things in your book highlighted in blue, those are basically new hunts going on. And so you can see there's an angler point limit in 231 uh, for those specific hunts, uh, which you can apply for. There are different season dates. Uh, but if you look at the picture there, uh, the uh, elk can have no more than five points on either side. So it's a, it's a management only. If you see a six by six or a six by seven uh, and you have this tag, uh, it is not in your realm uh, of hunting. So it is five by five only uh, for those uh, particular ones. Uh, and you can see uh, up above, uh, we had the um, uh, restriction last year uh, in a different unit, uh, which is why you don't see any quota for 22 for 231, uh, because this is the first year it's been offered there. Uh, the other ones have uh, the other quotas. Again, another avenue to apply for elk. So that's the point restriction on that, it's five? 
Correct. Okay. Yep. Yep. Five on on either side. So if it's a five by six, it would not be legal in this hunt. Okay. It would have to be five on each side or less. For the one horn ram, if you get drawn for that, do you lose your bonus points for regular ram? No. No. This is a totally separate hunt altogether. Totally separate category. So uh, uh, again, you can apply for Nelson Bighorn sheep and the one horn ram. Uh, without any uh, interference there. Now, if you, uh, when we're going to get to the order of the draw in a minute, uh, but you're going to, the bighorn sheep ram will be drawn first. So if you're unsuccessful in that, and then you put in for the one horn ram, uh, you possibly could draw that. But that wouldn't affect, because you already did not draw the bighorn sheep ram from the first time. And you'll see when we get to that slide what I mean by that. Uh, so, yeah, there's no bonus points uh, in these. Uh, this one is a once in a lifetime, and there's no bonus points uh, in this one uh, either. Uh, yep. Uh, junior hunters, again, uh, there's restrictions for uh, only certain units are antlered and antlerless. And that's uh, area six, area seven, uh, and area 10. Uh, however, if you are a junior and you are 11 years old, who will turn 12 before the beginning of the last junior hunt season, you are eligible to at least purchase just a bonus point this year. Because you must be 12 before the start of the season uh, to hunt in a junior hunt. Uh, and if you're not 12, then you're not eligible for that hunt. But you would be able to buy a bonus point if you turn 12 by the end of that season. And the junior hunts, of course, are, uh, they start off, uh, you have archery season, muzzleloader, and any legal weapon. So you can hunt in either one of those weapon categories uh, with the junior hunt. Not all the seasons are the same as far as, it's not always archery in August. Some of those junior hunts, you know, don't start till later in the year, but it just depends on when a youth's birthday would be. Uh, the big game uh, main draw electronic tag return uh, within seven days of public release of the draw the successful tag recipient can choose to electronically return his or her tag uh, that's going to be important to know when, when I start talking about uh, uh, the tag return uh, as opposed to as long as you return your tag after this before the start of the season you get your bonus points reinstated. And if you, for a mountain goat and bighorn sheep, uh, if you return your tag by July 15th, then you'll also receive the tag fee back and the bonus points. But that's only for mountain goat and bighorn sheep. Uh, everything else, you're just getting your bonus points back. So here's the draw order, which I'm talking about. So if you look over here at group one, we have a lot of uh, things going on here. We have the Silver State Partnership. We have the Wildlife PIW, which is Partnership in Wildlife. And then we have the Junior Mule Deer Hunt. These are the first things that are looked at on your application. So for each species, some have a Silver State tag. Uh, the nice thing with the Silver State tag is nobody has any bonus points in the Silver State tag. Everybody's in that at a level playing field. Uh, there is no bonus points for the Silver State Tag. Uh, PIW, uh, and the Silver State Tag, you can hunt a longer season with any weapon. The PIW, you can hunt a longer season, but you have to hunt within the weapon-specific season. So during the archery season, you gotta use archery. During the muzzleloader, you have to use muzzleloader. And during the rifle, you have to use rifle. Again, these are statewide. There are some restrictions on the Silver State tag. Being uh, the last person who held the Silver State tag, wherever they harvested their, their sheep or their uh, uh, for sheep, uh, you can't hunt in that. That unit would be closed. But if it would be one unit closed uh, throughout the state, you can hunt anywhere else. And an extended season. So you're just talking early in the year, uh, and you can hunt uh, all the way up to the end of December. So, if you apply for these and you are unsuccessful, uh, then it moves down to group two. 
So here you have the Rocky Mountain Bighorn Sheep Ram, California Bighorn Sheep Ram, Nelson Bighorn Sheep Ram. You can apply for each one of these, even though they're all bighorn sheep, uh, they're different category. Uh, they're different species. So then you have the elk antlers, then you have an elk depredation antler, you have an antelope horns longer than ears, a mule deer antler, and a mountain goat and bear. So each one of those is an application fee. Each one of those you can apply for individually. Now, if you drew one of those out of the Silver State tag, it will pretty much wipe you out underneath that. Because if you drew a Silver State tag, where you can hunt anywhere in the state in a, a prolonged season, you wouldn't want to have the normal tag uh, that would be a season tag and weapon specific. I mean, it's just a much better tag. And that's why these are in order. So you don't think, oh, I don't want to put in for that because I won't draw you know, uh, uh, my next tag that I want to. So that's kind of where it goes uh, in order there. Then we have group three, we move into the California ewe, uh, the Nelson bighorn sheep ewe, elk antlerless, elk depredation antlerless, antelope horn shorter than ears, and mule deer antlerless. Again, if I put in for a antler mule deer and an antlerless mule deer, and I was successful in the antler mule deer, it would pull me out of the antlerless because I can only have one deer tag a year. Um, also, if some of these hunts, like the California Bighorn Sheep U, if they're not offered, it's kind of like the mountain goat I mentioned a minute ago, your bonus points, if you have any, are kind of frozen there until a new season is open. So you don't lose anything, but you can't apply or you can't gain a bonus point because there's no season. So it sits there. So again, that's why I mentioned a couple times with the non-resident mountain goat, uh, because it's been several years since we've had a, a non-resident mountain goat tag. If you forget and you let this year go by and you miss next year, then you will zero out. Um, and then of course, last, way down here at the bottom, uh, group four, uh, we have spike elk and management ram and one horn ram. Again, these, these are your, your Hail Mary, your last applications uh, in there. Uh, if you were unsuccessful in group one, two, and three, and you had applications for spike elk management ram in this, it's another chance for you to draw one of these tags. Um, some people aren't interested at all in the spike. They, they would rather you know, go for something larger. Uh, but if you're, a, there's a lot of different kind of hunters out there. There's meat hunters, uh, there's trophy hunters, uh, but this is an opportunity to get out in Nevada and do some hunting this year. Uh, now, there's some exceptions to this, of course. Uh, there always is, right? Uh, heritage tags, which are auction tags, which you might see at some of uh, some uh, non-government organization banquets that are auctioning tags. Uh, the dream tag uh, must be in a different category. Uh, dream tag is not listed right here because the dream tag is totally something separate that you won't purchase here uh, on uh, inbound licensing. Uh, you would simply go to the Nevada Dream Tag and you can buy as many raffle tickets and a resource enhancement stamp uh, in that company. It's a totally different organization that does it. Uh, and basically you can buy as many tickets as you want. And then it goes into a, a basically a raffle uh, and or a drawing, I should say, and uh, you know you could put one ticket in and win, uh, or you could put a hundred in and win. So it, it really depends on you. Totally separate than that. However, if you do draw the dream tag uh, and it's in the same category, you would have to return uh, your Nevada tag. And the reason why I say that is because you would want to return your Nevada tag because the dream tag also has an extended season uh, and uh, a different weapon restrictions. Uh, also, you can uh, purchase the mule deer antelope landowner damage compensation tags. Uh, these sometimes can uh, run at a, at a high dollar. Uh, also elk incentive tags and antlerless elk landowner tags. Uh, but remember, you can get one deer, one elk, one elk, one mountain goat, one bear. You may obtain one tag for each of these three subspecies of bighorn sheep, though. 
So there's one exception there. So the sheep you can get a desert, a California, and a Rocky Mountain. Again, each one of these does have uh, an application fee. If you do that, um, and yeah, if you do that, you're, the lottery. You're, you're, you go buy some lottery tickets. Uh, so here's an example of this. So an applicant can only obtain one tag per species. This includes partner. This includes partnership and wildlife and Silver State tag. A person can be awarded and purchase a tag of the same species outside the draw. This includes the heritage and dream tag options. Winners of the dream tag must return their department awarded tag only if both dream and department tag match in species and category. So an example of this is a person may keep their antlerless elk tag uh, if they are the winner of the antler dream tag but a person must return their antlered elk tag if they are the winner of the antler elk dream tag. Does that make sense? Yep. I mean, yeah, so it's, it's one or the other. In the basic draw, you cannot get two of the same species. You cannot get an antler and an antlerless. But in the dream, because you're purchasing outside, uh, uh, you can have an antler and an antlerless, but not an antler and an antler. That's simple, huh? Yep. Okay, so uh, let's talk some about bonus points and why I've said a few times already, uh, buy some bonus points. Don't let your season go by without earning a bonus point. Um, so this is an example of uh, John Doe's big game application. So uh, we have here, you can see Antler Deer, he has only one bonus point, which means last year he applied and was unsuccessful. So he automatically got a bonus point. Now, uh, you can also, if, if you know you can't go hunting this year, because like I said, maybe you have a big wedding to go to and you just don't have the time, uh, nor the funding. Uh, so what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna buy a bonus point because I know I can't go hunting anyway, but I don't wanna miss out on a year. And next year I'll have two bonus points and you'll see how this escalates very rapidly. Uh, also, in the antelope horns uh, longer than ears, uh, he has four bonus points. And I'm going to show you where you can look and, and look at all your bonus points on your profile on inboundlicensing.com. Uh, so let's just take a quick uh, gander here how this works. Uh, here, our antler deer, uh, one bonus point. So we square these bonus points. One times one is one. And then we have to add one for the application. So one plus one equals two. We have, each application has to have a number. Uh, if you're brand new to applying, you have no number, right? You have no bonus points. Uh, so we have to assign that application a number. So every year, every application automatically gets one number, regardless of how many bonus points you got. If you look at his buck antelope here, uh, he has four bonus points, so four times four is 16. And then we take 16 plus one for the application, uh, gives him 17. So the computer will randomly select two numbers for his deer and will randomly select 17 numbers out of 100 million uh, for his buck antelope. And this happens with every application you put in. So if you put in 14 applications, you're going to each each application is gonna get its own number uh, through this whole system. Uh, the more you put in, each one is gonna be assigned a number. So you can kind of see the more you put in for, uh, the more chance you have of drawing something. So when we look at this, uh, where we go from here, uh, remember this, the computer randomly selected me two numbers, one uh, between one and 100 million. Then it looks at these numbers and it picks the lowest one and it assigns that to my application. Because if I can't win with this low number, I certainly can't win with that next one, right? This essentially, uh, this number here is essentially my place in line. That's what it is. That's why every application only gets one number regardless of the number of bonus points you get. But let's take a look at this one. Remember, he had 17 numbers. So the computer randomly selected him 17 numbers. It looks at all 17, and then it takes again the lowest number. And you can see some of these numbers were pretty high. Here's 90 million up top. Uh, down at the bottom, I got 1.9 million right down here. 
So it's going to assign my application this lowest number. This is why you want to have as many bonus points as you possibly can, uh, because it's going to give you a selection. Now, as uh, I was talking to this gentleman when he first came in, uh, it doesn't mean a person that comes along that only has one number, might be 1.8 million, and they would be in front of you. But if you get the opportunity to get 17 numbers or more, uh, it's going to give you a much better odd of getting a low number, which is going to, to get you a tag. And there's a lot of other variables with that, uh, as we'll kind of look at when we get into the into the unit selection. So uh, from this one, uh, we're going to go to party hunting. Party hunting is essentially the same, only you have more, more than one name on one application. So here we have uh, Charlie, uh, who has two bonus points. We have Bill who has six bonus points, and we have John who has two bonus points. And these three people decide, hey, let's go hunting together. We'll put in as a, as a group, as a party. So what happens here is we add all these points together, which is 10, and then we have to divide by the number of people in the party. So we get an average of 3.3, and then your basic math, we're gonna round to the nearest whole number, uh, which is three, right? Then when we come over here, uh, we square three because this application now only has three bonus points because we average this. And then we take three times three, which is nine, and we do the same process. Because it's an application, it's got to get a number. Because if all three of these folks had zero, right, if it was their first year of flying, how many numbers would they get? One because it'd be zero, 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 divided by three is zero, one for the application is one. And then the computer would select them one number for the application. Every application only gets one number, whether it's a party hunt or an individual. Uh, the difference is the party hunt has is asking for more tags than an individual. Uh, and it depends on how many people are in the party, uh, which brings up a great point. If you have a large party of five or six people for your deer hunt, and you're looking at last year's quota was only six deer tags in a unit, you might want to consider looking at a different unit. Because if the quota remains the same this year, your application is asking for every single tag in that unit. Now if the quota should drop by one, and there's six people in your party, and now there's only five tags in that unit, guess what? You're unsuccessful right off the bat, because there's not enough tags to give to your party. It would go to the next person with the next number, and if it's a single individual, and that was his or her first choice, they would get assigned one of those tags. And, and I get that question all the time. How could this person over here get a, a, a leftover tag in there, uh, in that unit when I put in for it? Well, because you were asking for more than what was left over in that unit. Uh, there's got to be there's got to be ample tags left for your party, uh, otherwise it'll just go to the next number. So so keep that in mind if you're party hunting, especially with a larger group. <clears throat> so we have ten numbers now. <clears throat> We're going to do exactly the same thing, uh, which what we just did. And what that is is the computer is going to randomly select them ten numbers. It's going to take the lowest number possible and it's going to assign that to their application. That's going to be their place in line. Okay, so in the book there uh, for deer hunting and stuff, uh, very important to look at last year's quota. The commission is setting quotas for this year, and that is just a, a guide that gives you, you know, an estimate of what is going to be. But don't push to the limit there on party hunting uh, if you if you're asking for most or all of the tags. Uh, uh, try to select something that has a lot more uh, opportunity for you there, for your party. Okay, so how do we know what to do? How do we know how to find some of this information? Uh, what do we do? You can go to our website, of course, uh, endow.org. Uh, and when you go to this, if you go to hunting right here, and to plan your hunt, uh, you're going to get to see this uh, beautiful top 10 resources uh, or big game resources. 
Make sure you click down here on the bottom where it says top 10 resources. And you're going to get this uh, excellent list of all kinds of things. I, I put a few things out here. And uh, uh, oh, the Hunt Nevada. Uh, this is a new hunt planning tool. It includes interactive hunt unit maps. I get that question a lot. You know, where can I hunt? Uh, where can I go? What's private property? There's a lot of other avenues you can do. Uh, a lot of other companies that have maps out that have private property uh, boundaries and everything you can definitely use. But remember, when you're out hunting, it is your responsibility uh, to know uh, private property uh, and know if you can hunt in that area. Uh, so this is an excellent tool right here. Uh, you have hunt information sheets, which is number three. Uh, which are they're put together by game biologists to help uh, to help hunters get prepared. It has uh, information on access, uh, recommended hunting areas, and comments. So you can click on this, and there, there's a lot of information here. So in order for me to put all this up on here, we would be here probably for two days. Uh, so start looking now, and uh, and then do some scouting, because uh, more so often than ever. Uh, I'll tell a person some of my favorite spots to go, and they go there and they go, man, I, I don't like that spot at all, man, you sent me to a fun spot. I'm like, no, that's my favorite spot. But, but what I like, you might not like. Uh, it depends on the, on the hunter. Uh, you like really steep hills? I don't. Uh, you know, I'm going to go to the, the smaller, more flat line stuff. So uh, it just depends. So go to some of these areas, check them out, see what you like on there and get a feel for where you're going to camp uh, and always uh, leave a hunt plan at home. Tell somebody where you're going. Uh, tell them when you're going to be back. Uh, and then you'll have an idea of what's in the area, right? I don't know if uh, a lot of you have ever been out and you think, uh, I'll just wait and go to the store, uh, the closest store uh, when I get out there. And then you get out there and the closest store is 100 miles away. So, you know. Be prepared for stuff like that. Take a scouting trip. Uh, this uh, uh, specialty hunts, this talks about the Silver State Tag, the Partnership in Wildlife and Dream Tags. Hunt unit maps, you can download and print uh, interactive maps online. Bonus points. Uh, this is a big one, and I'm going to show you this next sheet just to give you an idea of how the bonus point really on average works and, and, and adds up. Uh, hunt stats and checkout summaries uh, for bighorn sheep. Uh, if you've got a bighorn sheep or a mountain goat uh, tag uh, and you harvest, you have to bring it into our office. You have to fill out everything right there. And then we seal your sheep. Uh, so this is summaries of where people were hunting, uh, you know, what canyons they were in and everything. It's a great uh, opportunity to look for that. Uh, all this stuff is available. There's no secrets in this class that I'm giving right now. Uh, I mean, all this stuff is open. Uh, there's, there's no secrets. Um, big game season and application regulation brochure. Uh, all you guys here in this class I see have got one. Uh, make sure you carry that with you. It's, it's always a great benefit. You might say, what, you know, exactly where was my boundary at, right? Uh, and in those books is a map. And on the back of those maps is a description of the boundaries of that unit. So you may think, oh, I can hunt on the other side of that road. And then you look at the boundary and it says, oh, no, only on the south side of that road. So make sure you know where you are. Uh, and then, of course, license tags free. So do some homework. Uh, uh, get outside. Uh, do some scouting trips. Uh, this is an example of a 22 a Nevada bonus point uh, application choice trends. This is for units uh, 011 through 013. Uh, any legal weapon, the quota last year was 50. And you can see here's people with bonus points. Uh, <clears throat> uh, here's people with no bonus points, right? So in other words, this is the first time uh, person in here. Unless, you know, this is the first time you ever put into this unit uh, and and you have zero bonus points, it's your first time hunting. So here's people with no bonus points. Here's people with one, two, three, four, five, all the way down to 13. But if you look here in the three and four bonus point areas, right in here, 
these are successful applicants, and this was their first choice, right? Now you get five choices. So these people put down this unit as their first choice. You can see that nearly half of the, or actually exactly half, uh, of the tags went to people with three, four, and five bonus points. Because there's 10, 20, 25. Uh, and there was only 50 in the quota. So that's the importance of getting these bonus points. You can see up here, here's a person with no bonus points drew a tag here. Here's a, a two people who had one bonus point drew a tag here. And here was seven people who had two bonus points. Now, when we get to what I was talking with this gentleman uh, about earlier before we got started, uh, here's some people. Uh, there was two people who had eight bonus points and put this down for their first choice, but they were unsuccessful. Why? Because they ended up with a higher number than everybody else. That's sometimes the luck of the draw on that. So just because you got a lot of bonus points don't mean you're guaranteed a tag is the whole point of that. But you can see where the bonus points do play a majority role in getting you uh, a tag. Uh, you can see down here one person had uh, uh, nine and then one person had 13 <coughs> and then one person had 15, but this person drew a tag, right? He had 15 bonus points. There was only one person with 15 who put in for this unit and he drew a tag. So these guys just got unfortunate high numbers uh, right in here. Uh, uh, here there was two people who were successful who, who would put this in for their second choice. Here, third choice. So the majority of tags went for this three, four, and five. All these were successful tag holders. So you can see why building bonus points is a, is a great opportunity. If you're thinking down the road, I might want to hunt bighorn sheep, maybe someday, guess what? Buy a bonus point. Buy a bonus point right now. Uh, a bonus point, if you just buy the bonus point only, is $10. There's no... Uh, 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 predator fee or anything associated with that because when you buy a bonus point, guess what? You're not getting a tag because <laughs> you're just buying a bonus point. There's no way you can get a tag. But five years down the road, you decide, you know what? I think I want to put in for big horn sheep now. Now you've got five bonus points already. You know, you're already starting in the game. So that's what's really important uh, for right now. And I realize there's a lot of categories there, uh, and each one has an associated application fee with it. Uh, pick one or two or three and focus on those for a while uh, and, and see how that does you whenever you get to start putting in for there. Because the more bonus points you got, the higher probability you have, but you're not guaranteed in any way just because you got the most bonus points. Uh, here is, uh, here is the page that you're going to see there, uh, the 22 bonus point data. You just click on this arrow down button here for mule deer. We've got these for elk, antelope, big horn sheep, for everything. So really, you spend a lot of time on it, which is why we try to put this class on as early as possible. So you can do a lot of research and a lot of planning before you really have to put in. Uh, this is a mule deer point class uh, by unit and unit group. So if you're wondering, you know, how many big deer were taken out of that area, you can look in here and see how many four points were, how many three points were, how many two points were. Where do you suppose we get some of this information here? From the survey. Yeah, from that survey, which is why you have to complete the survey, uh, or you cannot put in for the following year. Okay. Uh, bighorn sheep and mountain goats, you're bringing those to our office, so we're going to we're going to measure those and score those right there for you. Uh, and bighorn sheep will give you a score, you know, what size lambs came out of this unit, what size came out of this lamb. So all this information is is online at our website and uh, uh, very helpful uh, uh, for getting on. So here's the online uh, uh, licensing system. Uh, this is also in the book, so this will help you. Uh, there's 1-800 numbers right here, uh, right down at the bottom there, Michelle. Uh, uh, if you can't get a hold of me or Michelle, 
Uh, you can always call this number uh, if you have some question. Uh, but the first thing uh, that we want to do, especially for new hunters uh, and people who are just taking their hunter education, is you want to go in and create your profile first. I say this uh, for beginning hunters and people who are taking their hunter education because if you complete your profile first and then you take a hunter education course, your certificate will automatically transfer over. Uh, if you do it the other way around, take the hunter education course first, it will try to transfer that certificate, but you don't exist over here. So it says, ah, I don't see you over there. And so it will only do it once. And then if it bounces back, uh, it's not the end of the world. You're gonna go take your hunter education and then complete your profile but then you have to manually enter that certificate number in yourself. Uh, if you're from out of state, uh, you can take your out of state hunter education and you can mail it to an email address I'm gonna show you here in a minute. But let's look at what we wanna do first for our profile. Uh, now there's, a, there's many ways you can do this. I'm gonna show you the way that I like to do it uh, the most. I do this every year in this order. Uh, it works for me. You can do it several different ways. Uh, I like to take care of all the business first and then go apply. Uh, you can go right into apply and then enter all this information at the end if you, if you wish to. <clears throat> so the first thing we wanna do is go up here and log in. And when we uh, log in, it's going to ask us for our email and our password. Well, if we've never done this before, uh, we're gonna have to click on sign up. If you remember your email and password from last year, you simply put that in and then you click log in. Uh, if you've forgotten your password, uh, you can always click on forgot my password. And then what you're gonna get is this. You can enter your email and it will send you a link uh, and tells you how to reset your password. Or you can click on reset my password without an email. And what this is going to do is going to ask you a couple different things, your social, your birthday, things like that, to make sure they know who you are. Then you can go in and reset your password that way. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if you are a new client, you're going to have to enter your date of birth, and it says choose an identification method. Choose your social security number, because you'll be surprised how many people think, oh, I don't have a profile. I don't. Uh, but at one point in time, you had a fishing license in the now. And in order to have a fishing license, you must have a social security on file, or social security number on file, uh, and your date of birth. And so you'd be surprised how many people put that in, and all of a sudden it pops up, and it's like, yeah, you got a profile. Uh, so that's why it searches this way first, to make sure you don't have a duplicate profile. If you end up with a duplicate profile, uh, when you go to apply, it won't know who you are because there's two of you. Uh, then you're going to be calling the 1 800 number. So make sure you don't have a duplicate profile. Um, with that being said, uh, once you enter your birth date uh, and your social security number, which is right here, uh, and then it comes up no customers found because I'm brand new and I never had a fishing license here, I never had a license of any kind. I'm gonna go on to create my new profile. This is basic stuff. You're gonna enter all your stuff here, your name, uh, middle name, last name, date of birth, your social, and your address. Uh, you can always go back in and edit this profile, uh, change your email, change your phone number, change your height, weight, uh, eye color, hair color. Uh, but there's a few things you cannot change on this. One is your birthday. One is your social security number, and one is your name. So make sure that you put all those names the same. And it's the same with new hunters. If your name is James, don't put Jimmy, because it's searching for you with all these other identifiers other than your social. And it, it will, sometimes will not recognize you on that. So you can always go in and edit some of this information uh, but some of it you will not be able to. So make sure you do it correctly that first time. Um, this is at the end of your profile. And I, I want to be clear on this one. So your name and contact information may be requested by third party. 
such as guides, taxidermists, market researchers, how would you like the department to respond to such requests? Uh, this setting uh, may be changed under your account profile. So I can always go in and change this, but this has nothing to do with the list of successful hunters uh, after the draw. So don't confuse that with this, because we're gonna get a very similar question to this uh, after we apply. And that's gonna ask me, do I want my name to appear if I'm successful? So if you don't, that's fine, you say no. If you do, you say yes. If you want your information or your email address and everything to go to a third party person, then here, please allow my information to be shared, okay? And again, you can always go back in and edit your profile with the exception of those three. Uh, once I've entered all that, it says new account created. How wonderful is that? You can see my name up here is Hunter Buck, and here's my client ID number. And here's what I do after this. So I've already got a profile. I remember my password and everything. When I sign on, this is where it's gonna take me to, to my account details. And here's my account over here. I have order history, payment methods, license and permits, vessel, so your boating and everything is involved with this. Uh, your return card surveys, this is where you're gonna come to do a return card after you draw a tag. You can do it right here electronically. Uh, you can link accounts to you if you have a minor or something who doesn't have their own email and doesn't have their own credit card, you can link them to your account. However, they will not have access to your account because it's your email and your password unless you give that to them. And then when if they have access to that, they can change any of this. So keep that in mind. Uh, also, you can look up your application and your points, your safety certifications. If you did what I just said a minute ago, uh, and I go in here, I want to check this first to see if my safety certificate is in there. Because otherwise, when I start applying for tags and it asks me to buy a license, if my safety certificate is not in there, it's going to say, time out, you cannot purchase a license until you have a hunter safety course. So if you're a non-resident, uh, we need to get that attached to your account. Uh, you can only add the Nevada certificate because obviously we don't have access to other states' accounts and, and who took a hunter at course at another state, only in Nevada. Uh, so I like to go through these, and that's what we're going to do here one at a time. The first thing I'm going to go to is my payment method. Why? Uh, because you've got to have a credit card on file. Uh, and if you're doing an auto renewal, uh, it's going to automatically charge your credit card. You'll get an email saying, hey, boom, uh, we charge your credit card for your new license. Uh, then I never have to worry about, oh man, I forgot, here it is August and I forgot to buy a hunting license and now I'm out in the field without a hunting license. Uh, so uh, it's very simple. Uh, you basically just add, click here on add new card. Uh, here's one thing that's, that's interesting though. So here's why I always look at my credit card. Because I don't really remember when my credit cards expire, every one of them. Uh, I don't know. And sometimes your bank may put a stop on your credit card if there's some suspicious activity or something going on. So you have to remember which credit card is here. Because if after seven days you draw a tag and it's not paid for, it's gonna count like you've got a tag. Your bonus points are gonna zero out, but you're not gonna get a tag because your credit card has either lapsed or the bank stopped it uh, or the expiration date was up, whatever the case may be. So always go in and check your payment methods. Make sure you're good to go. If not, you can add a new card. Uh, very simple, you put the billing address and everything and your credit card number in here and I agree to the term save payment method down here. Make sure you click the save. Once you do that, it's gonna give you this beautiful thing up here that says card added successfully. That's what you wanna see. If you're new to the system, you wanna see this. Uh, if, you're, if you look at your credit card that's in there and it doesn't expire to 2025, uh, you're good to go. You don't have to do nothing here. You just carry on. Uh, now, there's a few things we can do here. You can go right to apply for tags, but I like to take care of all the business, like I said first a minute ago. 
So I'm gonna go back over here to my Hunter Buck account, which is right underneath this, and I'm gonna click on this to my account, and it's gonna take me back to this over here. Because now I wanna look at my return cards. Because if I get to the system and I'm applying for tags and everything, and I forgot, I mean, I hunt in a lot of different states. Uh, I hunted Arizona, I hunted Idaho, I hunted Nevada. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did all my return questionnaires, but maybe I forgot. So I don't want to get to applying tags and go, sorry, uh, you didn't you didn't do your uh, return card. Then I got to come back to this. So uh, I'll click on return cards. Here it's going to show me uh, hip surveys that I did, small game surveys. Uh, obviously, if you're a new client, you're not going to have any of these. Uh, but if you're an existing client, you're going to have these years after year. Here's one pending, so I'm going to click on that one. I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to click on take the survey. Uh, and, and it's going to ask you how, you know, did you hunt upland game in Nevada this year? The answer is going to be yes or no. Just because it asked you to do a survey, maybe you did not. Maybe you planned on hunting, but maybe you just couldn't get out. Right? So the answer is no, I didn't hunt. And, and that's all that is. There's also another survey that's the hip survey, which is required if you are a migratory bird hunter. And that would be waterfowl and or dove. So you have to have a hip number. Uh, it's going to ask us that here in a minute if I did. And that's, and you can create your own hip number right here uh, in this system. Uh, here, I want to look at my application point. I just had a gentleman call me today. He says, hey, I should have two points. I applied two years in a row, but it says I only got one. I said, go to your applications and see if you put in for two years for that hunt. And sure enough, guess what? He says, I, I could have swore I put in two years in a row, but I only put in one application last year. Yes, yeah, so you only get one bonus point. That's what you got. You can look at this stuff yourself. Um, and I know these are not highlighted, they're grayed out, but click on them because they will take you to that. Usually these are a little brighter, but here uh, they're grayed out. You can click on either of these. Here's my application history. Uh, when I click on that, uh, here, I'm sorry, here's my bonus points. Uh, when I click on that, it's going to tell me wild turkey, I got one, mule deer, I got four, black bear, I got 11, uh, on and on and on. Oh, here we go, 21 on California bighorn sheep. 22 on mountain goat and 22 on bighorn sheep. Is this good? Yeah, I'm going to be getting selected what? 400 plus numbers this year. Out of that 400 numbers, guess what? I'm really hoping that I'm grabbing a low number, right? Out of 400 numbers. Now, again, does that mean a person coming in their first year, am I guaranteed a lower number than them? No. No. No, uh, I could be waiting another year. Uh, but you can look at all this information yourself, and you should. Um, here's the applications. Uh, so you can see here, I was unsuccessful in 2019. Uh, here I bought points only. Why? Because I'm like, you know what? Uh, I, just, I just can't go up this year in the units I want to go to. Uh, I get too much going on, so I just bought points. Here, in 2019, uh, I thought it was 2017. See, years fly by. Uh, but here I was awarded a Nelson's Bighorn Sheep uh, in 2019. Now I'm going to be on a waiting period for this. If I try to click on apply for a Nelson's Bighorn Sheep, it's going to say I'm not eligible because I'm in a waiting period for this. Um, so again, once you draw a Bighorn Sheep, a Mountain Goat, an Elk Tag, you're all in a waiting period. Uh, the uh, mule deer does not have a waiting period. Uh, so you can, even if you draw this year, you can apply again the next year. But hence another reason why you want to build bonus points, because these people who are drawn to these bigger tags are going to be on a waiting period. So they're not going to be applying the next year, uh, which is why you want to build your bonus points so you can grab that little number. Uh, this has my history all the way down. Uh, uh, you can scroll and then we'll go all the way down to whenever you started. Um, uh, here I'm going to go to my safety certifications. Uh, I'm a new hunter coming from out of state. I click on this. I have no safety certificates. 
Now, if I was born before 1960, January 1st, 1960, I wouldn't need one. So if I was born in 59, uh, I could go right in and apply for tags. I wouldn't need a hunter application. Anybody born after January 1st, 1960 has got to have a certificate in hand. If you don't, uh, you've got to get one. Uh, and you can take them right here. Uh, in, in this class, we have tons of classes listed all over the state uh, for hunter education. Uh, if you're 18 or over, you can take it online only. Or you can come to an in-person class that's going to be up to you. One way or the other, uh, you have to take that course. Uh, so we're going to add new because uh, I did the inevitable. I uh, went and took the hunter at first, then I went and created my profile, and it didn't know where to send the certificate to. Mm -hmm. So when I click on this, here you're going to have Nevada Hunter Education. You click on this arrow down button. It only gives me one choice, and that's Nevada. Uh, because I don't know about Colorado, I don't know about New Mexico, I don't know about Arizona. Uh, and then I enter my certificate number in here, uh, and Nevada comes up here, and then I simply click Submit. If you have taken a certificate uh, hunter education course in another state other than Nevada, you will need to email a clear picture of your education certificate to this email address. So, this is why you're here early. Don't wait to May 6th and be emailing your hunter education certificate to this. Uh, get it done now. If you're new or from out of state and you have a hunter education certificate, get it locked in. So you don't get set back. Um, here, uh, here's my uh, another person, uh, click on safety certificates. Uh, all your safety certificates will show up here. You can see here, I took a Bighorn U identification course. It shows up here. Uh, I had a hunter education, a hunter education, and a hunter education. Uh, and here I had a bow hunter education class, which is not required uh, in Nevada, but we do offer that uh, because several states do require a specific bow hunter education certificate where your hunter education will not suffice. Uh, so we do offer bow hunter education courses here just if you are going out of state. Uh, again, you can find those classes on the register-ed.com where you guys probably went and signed up for this class. Um, so uh, uh, once these are in here, they're, they're in here basically. You don't have to retake a hunter education course once you get your certificate in there. Uh, it's good, with the exception of two violations, and that's carrying a loaded uh, weapon in or on a vehicle or shooting uh, from or across a roadway. Uh, those two uh, violations uh, will know your hunter education certificate and you'll have to retake a course. Uh, so keep that in mind. If that does happen, you do that early in the year because if you start it right now, uh, you'd be pressed to get it done by the deadline of the draw. So remember those two rules. Uh, again, uh, here uh, is the on, uh, on live ED at endow.zendesk.com, uh, which is where you will mail your certificate to. Uh, auto renewals. Uh, this is uh, one thing that I really like to go to. Uh, and the reason why, because it's very simple. Uh, I click on yes, and my card ending in 100 buck. Remember, I have to make sure that my credit card is going to be valid, all right? Uh, otherwise, if it tries to charge that, it's not going to auto-renew my thing if the credit card is void, which we've already checked early on. Uh, uh, you can always go in and change this if you want to. I don't know why you would, though. This is such a great uh, process here. Uh, it's it's very, uh, very enjoyable for me because I don't have to worry about that. And I can go in and print my own license at this point. Uh, <clears throat> from there, uh, we can link a person's account. If you know a friend who doesn't have an email address, uh, because you have to have an email address uh, in order uh, to work this system. Uh, so if you have a minor that you want to link to your account, uh, or a friend that you want to link to your account, you certainly can. Remember though, you will have to do all the work. Uh, you will have to do your application, and then you have to go back in and do their application. Uh, and we're going to show you how to do that right now. So you'll look up here, and you can see this is my name, Hunter Buck, and it says account and details right here. So I'm basically going to click on link new account, and guess what? 
we're right back to this page that we started with, right? Because you're going to have to search this person just like you searched yourself. So you're going to put in their date of birth uh, and their social security number. Uh, then uh, it's going to come up. If it doesn't come up, you're going to enter all of their information just like you did for you. And it's going to say they are linked to your account right there. You can see that Hunter is the primary and then Spike is linked to this account. So what's important is up here, you can go through and apply for tags as Hunter Buck. Then you have to come back to your account details and click on Spike. Once you click on Spike, he's actually going to show up here. Now it says Hi Spike Buck. So make sure you have the right name up top when you're applying for things, especially if you've got people who want to do different things. Some people don't want to hunt elk. Uh, some people do. Uh, so if you're applying for different things, make sure you're in the right category for that or the right uh, account for this. Again, a lot of people just do this uh, with minor uh, minors who don't have their own uh, uh, email address uh, or credit card. Um, so, uh, and you can switch back and forth. If I click on 100 buck, it's gonna come back up here. Uh, then Spike would be down here. So you can click back and forth. The beautiful thing is uh, Spike gets older and uh, he's on his own. Uh, I can just simply go in here and unlink uh, his account to me. And that's how he's off. Uh, create his own account. Uh, very simple on that. Uh, license and permits. Uh, I can go up here. I can purchase a license here. Why? Because I got my hunter education in there, right? My credit card's good, right? I can go right to this and do this. Again, if you went to any of these in a different, uh, uh, different route, uh, you can still get through it. Uh, you'll just have to enter all this stuff in at that point. Uh, so here I can purchase a license here because it says I have the license, right? It knows. Uh, here's all. Here's a person who had several licenses before. Uh, here I have a resident hunt fish combo, uh, and I can print my active license right here. When I click on print active license, uh, it's going to bring up the year, uh, the valid dates, uh, how much I purchased uh, this for. Uh, a uh, mount line tag does get mailed to you, so you're not gonna be able to print that. Uh, but it's gonna ask me, do I want to print it or do I want it emailed to me? Again, I can do one or I could do both. Uh, remember, you just have to make sure you what? Have a license on your person when you're out in the field hunting, uh, whether it be electronic or whether it be a paper license. Uh, if it's electronic, there's a screenshot, a photo of it, something. So if you don't have any internet access, you can still bring that license up. <clears throat> After that, I go back uh, to high 100 buck, and guess what? Whew, we're ready to apply for tags. Here we go, right? So I'm clicking on, but all my business is taken care of over here now, right? I've got all this together, and you'll see how easy this is. We're gonna apply for tags. Uh, this is new this year. This is a detailed question, and, and you have to answer this. Uh, do you want to stay informed about hunting and fishing seasons and ensure you don't miss application deadlines and other important information? Opt in for text messages, alerts from the Department of Wildlife, so you can opt in or opt out. Obviously, if you're opting in, whenever we look at our profile, make sure we have a correct phone number there, right? Otherwise, you're not going to get any text messages. Uh, and then you simply submit this. It's gonna be the first thing that it asks you for right here. <clears throat> then here, uh, uh, this is very helpful too, and this will be the next page that comes up uh, under Hunter Buck. And here you're gonna see frequently asked questions here. Uh, this is really a great uh, thing to page through if you've got nothing to do on a, uh, a late night. Uh, it's going to give you a lot, a lot of uh, common questions that you probably got as well. Uh, otherwise, if you don't click on this, it's going to give you all of these categories. You can see each one of these blue boxes is a category, right? Within these categories are more categories. And I'm going to show you what I mean. So you have 
So you can apply for horns longer than ears, horns shorter than ears. You can apply for a bear, which is, which is either sex. Uh, you can apply for California bighorn ram. Uh, now in the past, there was a California ewe hunt. Uh, huh, I don't really see it there, do you? No, because it would be right here. What does that mean? There's not a hunt this year for that. So if you got a bonus point on that, hang, you know, you're gonna just have to hang out of that bonus point until a hunt is uh, allocated. Elk, check this out. You got antler, antlerless. You've got depredation antler. You've got depredation antlerless, and you've got spike. You can apply for each one of these. And remember what I showed you, the order that it goes through. You're not gonna get one of each. You're only gonna get one, right? But you can apply. What does that mean? Well, if I'm unsuccessful here and I don't apply for any of these other ones, I don't stand a chance of drawing one. <clears throat> but if I apply for each one of these, and remember, there is an application fee for each one. Uh, but if I apply for, each, apply for each one of these and I'm unsuccessful here, and I'm unsuccessful here, oh, look, I'm successful here. The number one question I get, Martin, What's my best chances of being successful in getting a tag? Well, this is it. You gotta apply. You gotta apply for as many as you can. Uh, here's mountain goat. There's only one choice here because it's either sex, just like the bear. Uh, mule deer, you'll see down here, antlers, antlerless, or junior hunt. And uh, we can apply for all these with the exception of junior hunters because I don't meet the requirement for a junior hunter because of my age. So it's going to tell me that, that I, I can't do that. But you can apply for all these as well, uh, antler and antlerless. Nelson Bighorn Sheep, here I've got ram, I've got you, I've got management ram, and I got management ram one horn. Four different applications I can put in there for them. Uh, and then down at the very bottom is the Rocky Mountain Bighorn Sheep, which is just ram. All right? So when we look at this one, which I clicked on the youth hunt right here, resident, mule deer, junior, antlerless, antlerless. Uh-oh, you're not eligible uh, due to your age requirement. It's going to tell me right in there. It's going to walk me right through it. So I went back uh, and I clicked on uh, the mule deer uh, antlers. Um, so remember I said all those categories and within those categories are more categories. So here's your more categories. I can apply for Silver State. I can apply for the general draw. And I also can check to be an alternate. Uh, and then I can check for partnership and wildlife. Each one of these is a separate draw. You can see the mule deer is $20. Uh, this draw is $10, and this draw is $10. And I can also just click on bonus points. Now, if I go through here, and I'm going to click, click on all these, why? Because I'm giving myself the best chance to draw a tag. You'll notice that the bonus point grayed out. Because if I'm unsuccessful in all of these, I'm getting a bonus point anyway, right? I'm getting the bonus points because I was unsuccessful. The, and remember the order of the draw. You guys remember? It was Silver State and PIW first. So if I draw one of these, guess what? I get scrapped on this one because I drew this or I drew this. If I'm unsuccessful in this and this, and I'm successful in this, that was my, my third opportunity already within this category, within this one category. Uh, so I don't get this. If I know I can't hunt this year because of whatever reason, you can go right down here and click on apply for bonus point only. If you click on apply for bonus point only, these three up here will all gray out because you can't choose them now. You're just buying a bonus point. There's no way you will get a tag. You're not applying for a tag. You're just applying for bonus points. Then you have to decide this. Do I want an individual hunt, create a new party hunt, or join an existing party? So this happens when friends say, okay, I'll be the party leader. Once I run through my application, uh, I'll give you my group number. 
And then when you come here to join an existing party, all you have to do is enter the group number. You get no choices because you're going to be writing on the choices with your buddy in your group or your group application. Uh, uh, this is only for deer, uh, antlerless elk, and uh, horns shorter than ears, antelope. And deer is the only one resident and non-resident uh, specific. The other are uh, non-specific. The other two are resident and non-resident specific. Uh, and you can tell that in your book in there because it will give you. Now that's a that's a good point. If uh, you got two people in your party uh, and you got a buddy coming from Colorado, going to be hunting with you, uh, and he's going to bring his son. So there's going to be two non-residents. You have to look in not only the resident quota, but the non-resident quota. And if there's only two non-resident quota, you've got to ask yourself, I'm asking for all of those. And if there's only one non-resident left because somebody had a lower number than you ahead of you, and they took one of those, even though there was plenty left for the resident, there's not for the non-resident. So guess what? Goes to your next choice. Uh, so keep that in mind. You, you have to look at the quota and how many tags you're asking for. Uh, to continue on to this, if I want to join an existing party, uh, once I click on that, it's going to tell me to enter the party number here, and it's going to skip all the choices because you don't get to choose. Uh, if I want to create a new party, uh, uh, you can, oops, if I want to create a new party, uh, basically it's the same as the individual hunt, only it's going to give you a party number at the end. You're not going to see the party number until you get your receipt. Uh, then it's going to say, uh-oh, uh, Martin, you need a valid license uh, because your license is going to expire before uh, the application period ends. Uh, so here I can purchase a license now with an application. You can purchase a hunting license only if successful in the draw. But as I've already shown you, the real point here in Nevada is you want to build bonus points. You cannot build a bonus point without a valid hunting license. So if you choose this, you will never earn a bonus point. And you'll be amazed how many people call me this time of year and say, hey, I put in last year, but I, don't, I didn't get a bonus point. And then you do research, you go, well, you clicked. Uh, I only want a license if I'm drawn. And you will not get a bonus point if you do that. So you want to go ahead and purchase your hunting license uh, with the application. <clears throat> then I have to choose Nevada resident. Uh, and then I have to put what year I moved here. Uh, and this is very important. Uh, this is a resident senior license. Don't overlook this. If you are 65 years of age or older uh, and you have resided uh, in uh, Nevada for the last six months, this is what you want to be checking. But you have to be over 65. If you click this and you're only 64, what's it going to say? Yeah, you don't qualify for this license. Uh, but it's substantially uh, a lower priced license uh, for the senior. Uh, so make sure you click on the right thing here. And then, of course, submit. So finally, we get to the area map where we get to choose what units we want to hunt in. Uh, and again, this is all done in a test system. So none of this uh, is in our system right now. This is all test for training purposes. Uh, so I, I'm just guessing on units here. No secrets. Uh, you know, this is, there's nothing you learn learning here other than learning how to do this. Uh, so. Uh, the first thing I did was I, I chose this unit here, a 014, uh, which is right here. You'll see it's going to give me weapon choices right here. Uh, it automatically defaults to any legal weapon. So if you're not a rifle <coughs> hunter, you need to either click on archery or muzzleloader. It will always default to any legal weapon. Uh, please don't uh, mess up on that because... Uh, uh, once you do get to the end, uh, every year we have the same thing. Uh, I drew an archery tag, but I don't hunt archery. Well, you know, uh, that's because you must have clicked on this and then and chose an archery hunt. Uh, now, what can you do? You can return your tag. Uh, you won't get your, your 
uh, application fee back on your uh, tag fee, but you could restore your bonus points if it's before the deadline. So you have to click on this one. There's only one hunt here. It's October 5th uh, to November 5th, and there was eight tags last year. It tells you here what's there. Uh, so keep that in mind. And then you submit this choice. Once you click Submit Choice, it comes up over here. And here's your first choice. Uh, now I'm going to go to the next one, and I, I decide I want to do some archery. Because I can mix my weapons choices here. So I'm going to click on archery, and there's only one hunt here. There was only two tags last year. Now, if this was a party hunt, guess what? I don't want to give this to three of my friends, because you're not going to get this tag. There's only two tags. Uh, and there's three of us on the application. Um, so always remember that. And I'm going to submit this choice, and you can see it, it came up over here. Then I can say, whoops, I wanted to do the archery first. Uh, instead of the any legal weapon. I can click on these two little bars right here and just drag them up here and it'll swap them. So you can swap those around before you move on. Uh, lastly, uh, I went through and I added all five of mine and you can say uh, you have reached the maximum number of choices. Uh, I couldn't scroll down on this one here, but here's my fourth choice and my fifth choice is underneath. Now, Again, here's the question, what are my best chances, Martin? Uh, your best chances are choose five choices. Uh, every year I get people, well, I only want to hunt in 231. That's the only unit I want to hunt in. So I'm only putting down 231. Okay, uh, and that's all you would ever draw would be 231, but you're also cutting yourself out of five other choices. Because if, if 014 comes up, and they go, sorry, Martin, there's no tags left there. They go to my next choice. Uh, any legal weapon, October 5th, oh, sorry, Martin, there's no tags here. It goes to my third choice. Muzzleloader, guess what, Martin? There's a tag there. You drew a tag. If I only chose one unit and it, there was no tags left there, I would be unsuccessful. And I would gain a bonus point for next year. So that's the best thing to do is apply uh, uh, for five choices. Uh, the alternate, uh, when you choose the alternate, that gives you an added way uh, to get a tag if it works for you. Uh, because you can get that tag. We're not going to call you and say, oh, we see you checked alternate. Uh, do you want the tag? No, it's going to show up at your door. <laughs> uh, so you better check the mail and go, wow, I got a dare tag now. I'm going next week. You know, so again, it works for some people, it doesn't work for others. However, it only looks at your first choice. If nobody chose this unit as their first choice alternate for archery, this tag would look, first of all, for an alternate. No alternate, it would go into the first come, first serve, and it would pop up there. Then you sign on sometime, whenever, uh, and oh look, there's an archery tag. And boom, you can buy it right then, right there. So that's how that works. But if the alternate works for you, it's a great way. It covers a lot of bases uh, if something does get returned. And, and honestly, we get a lot of return tags. So uh, it, the alternate is a way to go if it works for you. Um, <clears throat> Uh, this one, uh, it says add a resident mountain lion tag. I always do. The mountain lion tag is good year round. Uh, if I end up with a antelope tag and I go hunting sage grouse uh, and I get a deer tag, I'm out in the field quite a bit. And uh, with the exception of before I go hunting, I need to make sure the units are open. Uh, sometimes some units will close if we need a special quota in those units for mountain lion. Otherwise, my tag is good anywhere. And once I, once I have painted, it's good for the whole year, I carry it with me. And you can get two mountain lions a year in Nevada. So if I fill that mountain lion tag, I can buy another one, uh, which is good for another year as well. So I always buy that, it's $25. This, uh, you cannot print this. Uh, all tags will be mailed to you uh, for a convenience charge. Uh, so here's what I got so far. I applied for the Silver State tag. I applied for the resident mule deer tag. I applied for the partnership uh, in wildlife tag for mule deer. I bought a hunting license and I bought a mountain lion tag. 
so this is what I owe right now, and this is what I will owe if I draw those tags, right? Uh, I would only draw one of these, right? Because I can only draw one of these. So I would owe $31 for one of these, not all three of them. That's what's due if, if you were awarded that tag. So due now is $117. It's going to ask me, check this over, uh, make sure this is right. Uh, I like it. Uh, you can see the partnership in wildlife is any open unit, so you don't get to choose any units for that. You're only choosing for the general tag. That's the only thing that you're choosing units for. Now I want to continue shopping. Why? Because I'm going to go back. I'm going to apply for antelope. I'm going to apply for elk. I'm going to apply for big long sheep. Uh, and, you know, and I will continue on and on and on. I can apply for as many as I want. If it's too much for me, I think, wow, I, I don't know if I can do that much hunting. What am I going to do? I'm going to buy bonus points. Uh, I'm going to buy bonus points because down the road, uh, I want to be in the game. And you can see how the bonus points put you in the game. Um, so I'm going to continue shopping. Uh, here's the big question. So this comes at the end after you are getting ready to pay. It says, uh, the department publicly posts the results of each big game draw on inbound licensing every year. Would you like the department to manage all of your draw results this year? This means if you say yes, please keep my draw results private. Or if you say yes, please include my draw results on the list. Your name will show up on that list if you draw a tag. Works for some people, doesn't work for others. So you get to choose what works for you. Uh, the benefit of this is when the results come out, all your friends will say, oh yeah, I drew a tag, I drew a tag, did you? Well, I don't know, <laughs> right? Because I didn't put my name on the list. So you've got to wait. Now there's a couple ways you can tell. If you look at your credit card statement and you got, a, you got a tag charge there. Yeah, I knew I drew a tag. What tag did you draw? Don't know, you know, unless you go back and look at the tag fees, you know. So you can figure out a few things that way. Uh, I'm gonna submit this, so you have to check one of these, uh, one or the other. Uh, then it goes back, did you hunt upland game uh, in Nevada during the prior season? Yes or no? Uh, this is where it's going to go back to one of your surveys. Uh, it's going to be pending here, right? So you can go back and answer this now, or you can go back and answer it a little bit later. This is for your upland game. Uh, and this is your hip survey. Or I'm sorry, uh, I said upland, uh, migratory. Uh, will you hunt ducks, geese, and snipe and doves in Nevada this year? Well, I think I'm going to because I want a hip number, right? Uh, I usually hunt ducks. Uh, uh, I don't, I, I pretty much don't hunt doves, uh, but I hunt waterfowl. So yes, I think I'm gonna hunt migratory birds this year. So uh, I click yes, uh, oops, and I click submit. Uh, and then it, it asks me for this, is for the previous year now, right? Because I just said, yes, I'm going to. So next year it's gonna say, what you get, right? This is for last year, uh, ducks. I didn't hunt ducks. Geese, I did. I got one in 10. It's very simple. You just fill these things out. This is for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Migratory Bird Act. Uh, then uh, success, the survey's been submitted successfully. Uh, here's my hip number right here, 793027. So that's going to be on your license, right? Which you have to have uh, if you're hunting migratory birds. Uh, dove. Dove is a migratory bird. Most people think it's waterfowl only, but it's a dove is a migratory bird, so you have to have that for, for dove as well. Uh, so we're finally getting to it. Uh, I'm going to continue shopping because I want to buy a lot more, but right now I have $53 uh, for my resident antler deer and my hunt license, $39. Um, uh, would I like to donate to support the Resource Enhancement Fund? Uh, this money goes into the heritage account. Uh, it's used uh, in uh, doing wildlife surveys, augmenting wildlife, uh, research. Uh, you can donate anything from $10 up to $1,000 for this account. I always throw a few bucks in there. And new this year, uh, would you like to donate and support the Nevada Youth License Fund? What this is going to do, uh, and I added $30 in here because a youth license is $15. 
So what this is going to do is it's going to allow you this. This won't be for this draw. It's going to have to be. Uh, it, it will be available uh, after the deadline of this draw in June, and uh, maybe even uh, toward the end of June. Uh, and what it will allow is a youth to go in and get a free license, because I basically just bought two youth licenses. Uh, it's what I'm, I'm doing on this one. Uh, so we're hoping to uh, do that to allow youth to not, you know, need to purchase the general hunting license. You'll still have tag fees applying for big game, but you can go uh, up on game hunting, uh, waterfowl hunting, depending on your age, who might need a, uh, a migratory bird stamp from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Uh, otherwise, uh, uh, and these would be on a first come first serve basis. When they were gone, they're gone. So uh, if you feel the anchor to donate to take a, to allow a youth to get a free license this year, uh, that would be awesome. Again, this is going to build up over here in my summary of, of what I'm doing. Uh, so uh, here's choose how you would like to receive your license. Well, uh, all these tags got to be mailed to me. Uh, so I'm going to click on ship to me. Uh, and then you can see these are all checked. Uh, because all these have to be mailed to me, uh, whichever one I draw here, right? Because I'm not going to get the Silver State and the, the tag and the PIW. I'm only going to get one of these. Uh, remember, I updated all my profile at the beginning. So I simply click on my address here. Uh, and then I click continue. Uh, when I get to continue, it says uh, it's going to mail this to me. I can choose my shipping method. Uh, if I choose to have my resident annual hunting license shipped to me, there's a $5 charge for that. Or you can print it yourself and email it to yourself. Up to you, you know, whichever one you want to do. So uh, this is a U.S. Uh, ground shipping right here, $5 for that hunting license. Again, click continue. Remember, I already updated my credit card, so I don't have to mess with this. But I could now if I didn't want to. Uh, I could go in here and add my new card right here, but I've already done it. So I simply click on this credit card. It's going to fill all this in for me. Uh, and I can change credit cards if I want to and make this my primary credit card. My billing address will all fill in because I've already done that. Uh, here I'm going to check out. I agree to these terms and conditions, place order, and guess what? Whew. We are doing the happy dance, right? Here we are. We have flied. Uh, now, I just did the mule deer. I didn't go back and do you know, bighorn sheep and elk, but they're all exactly the same. Uh, it's going to walk you through. Uh, this is what you uh, want to see. Your order has been placed. Here's your order number. Uh, it's going to give you all this data down here. It's going to give you your total that I end up. Now, I can go back to my account here if, I just, if suddenly my friend calls me and says, oh, man, uh, you know, I wish you would have told me you were putting in for deer. I would go with you. Okay, I can fix that. I can go back to my account right here. Uh, here's my group number that is going to, this is your same receipt. Your group number is going to show up on here. And I'm going to show you if you, if you don't have this right now in a week and a half, two weeks from now. If you don't know where this number is, I'll show you how to get this number. So I'm going to go back. And we already looked at this, application of points, and I'm going to click on application history. Uh, here's my application that I just did, uh, 322 uh, 23. I just did this, uh, just last week. Uh, so I click on this arrow down over here, and it brings up all this neat stuff. Like here's my group code, right? So all I got to do is sign back in here uh, with my email and password, uh, and write down my group code and give it to my buddy. And then he's going to click on what? Join a group. And then he's going to put that group number in. And he's done. He's going right to checkout. It's going to ask him, do you want a mountain lion license? Do you want this? Do you want that? Just like it did you. And then he's going to check out. He, he will not be able to select units, though, because he's joining your group. Uh, if he says, hey, man, uh, you should have selected the alternate because we can go in, in the drop of a hat. That's not a problem either. I'm going to come down here and see this pencil. I'm going to click on that pencil and it will change no to yes. Uh, <clears throat> if I want to leave the party because suddenly I decide I'm not going with you guys, I don't want to go to those units that you picked, I want to go somewhere else, so I'm going to leave your party. 
uh, I'm going to click on leave the party. But if I'm the party leader, right, and I leave the party, it will give you this, this message. Are you sure you want to leave the hunting party? All other hunting party members will be removed from the party, which means if you guys were in the party, you would all go to individual with the choices that was picked. Now you can go back in and edit those. I'm going to show you that in a second, but uh, that's important. Now, if, if you're not a party leader, it's going to say party member. So you can simply go in and remove yourself uh, as a party <coughs> member if you decided that you didn't want to go in the units that your buddies are going into. Uh, <clears throat> then at the bottom of this page, it's still giving you all these choices so you get to see what you're going for, right? Uh, you can hear, you can edit your choices, right? And only the party leader can do this on a party application. Uh, an individual can do this for his or hers. Uh, and then if for some reason something came up and you absolutely decided, I can't go hunting this year, you simply can go right back in here and click on convert all, all my stuff to bonus points without going back and doing a lot of things. Whatever you do, I don't recommend withdrawing the application. And let me tell you why. You've already paid an application fee. An application fee is non-refundable. If you withdraw this application and go back in and create another one, you are going to pay another application fee. No exception. So the only way you would withdraw an application is if you were never going on it again and you you know, and and you your refund uh, on that would, would only be the tax because the application fees are non-refundable. So uh, don't click on this one. You can edit anything here or you can edit choices here uh, on that one. And again, you can go back to account and your profile. You make sure all this stuff is right. Uh, here's your application and points. This is where you're gonna go if you forget something or you go, boy, I don't remember what units I put in for. Anybody ever done that? I, I actually do it almost every year. Uh, so I can go back in here and bring up what units I put in for. And uh, don't forget this top 10 big game tag application resources. This is a great value for everybody. It gives you a ton of information. Get on there and surf through some of this stuff. <clears throat> and with that being said, here is a helpline. 1-855-542-6369. You can contact me or Michelle down at the Pepper Lane office. Uh, we'll be glad to answer any questions uh, that you may have, uh, or you can call this, uh, this hotline here. Uh, remember that your license fees fund conservation and wildlife management programs and sharing hunting opportunities for future generations. And that's all I have for this presentation. I hope that I managed to answer all of your questions. And uh, if you guys have any questions, we'll, uh, we're actually going to go to see if there's any questions online <clears throat> first. Uh, and there is. Um, there's one. Can you explain a little bit more about the spike elk regulations? The way it reads implies that a two-point elk is legal. Yes. Uh, so two points. You can have two points on each side. Uh, that's it. So uh, a, the, term, the definition spike, a lot of people uh, think of as just, you know, one antler point coming up. But in Nevada, the definition of spike is no more than two points on either side. So if it had two points on this side and one on this side, it would be a spike. Uh, if it had one point on this side and three on this side, it would not be a spike. So you can have no more than two points on either side. I know that's a, a is a new thing and it's new this year, so there would be a lot of questions on that one. Is that it for that? Mm -hmm. Any questions in the class? <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I was trying to get you to turn it off. <laughs> <laughs>